Hey everybody, what's up? So, I'm switching reviews around because there's a movie I want to talk about that I don't see a lot of people talking about. Um, the movie I was going to put up, and I will, closer to Halloween, I think he gets a little bit more attention because it's a little bit more famous. Now, the movie I'm going to talk to you about tonight um, is actually kind of like a sequel, if you will, of another movie that has a cult following. If you're a sweet transvestite or you do the time warp, you know what movie I'm talking about. And I think this had too many people talking about it. So, and you kind of caught a glimpse of the movie, a little bit of it. But here it is. Hawk Treatment. From Richard K. O'Brien. It is the 25th anniversary edition. Um, this movie, for the longest time, was never released, in fact, on DVD. Of course, the premise is a little bit different. Um, Little Nell... Uh, Patricia Quinn, um, let me see who else, who else, who else, who else. Richard K. O'Brien, of course. Um, the guy, I can't remember his name, who plays Ralph Hapshat in the first movie. Like, you catch a brief, brief eh, shot of him in the first movie. Um, or in here. Uh, I think the guy, I'm trying to think. Charles Gray, who, of course, is the... Um, who's the narrator of the first movie. He's in this movie, but he plays a judge. So I'm looking through everybody. Barry Boswick, according to what I've read, cannot be available, was not available to film his role of Brad Majors. They did say why Susan Sarandon didn't come into the, this movie. Um, so Brad is played with a dual rule by Cliff DeYoung and... Uh, Janet is played by Jessica Harper. In all honesty, it's I'm kind of glad that they don't have the same two actors for that, the, those roles, because they're supposed to have been married for a while. This movie did come out in 1981. Um, from what I've heard, it didn't get a lot of release. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference. Um, the way I actually found out about this movie, and I decided to look into it, yes, the cinema snob did talk about it, but that was the first time I've ever heard anyone really talk about the movie. When I first saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show years ago, um, it was at a friend's house, and she's like, oh, don't walk shot treatment. It doesn't have a lot of the same cast. <coughs> That's the different premise, excuse me. So it didn't, it, the way uh, they talked about it, it, there wasn't a lot, they didn't, they didn't find a lot of appeal to it. To be honest, I did find a lot of appeal to this movie. Um, the reason really being is... kind of like this. This is the weird thing. Okay, I'm going to start this off first of all. This is considered to be a PG movie. I'm not kidding you. The American Movie Association actually rated this movie as PG. It is rated PG in Canada. There's stuff in here that's not PG. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's just the time frame. I've, I'm, I've actually seen G-rated movies that have shown boobs. Not going to lie. You can see breasts in G-rated movies. Um... I think, like, standards and practices have changed over time, so, of course, you know, things get a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to think of the movie that I saw that in. I've read a couple, actually. But, uh, I'm just going to give you a fun little story I heard, um, since I'm never, ever going to talk about this movie ever. I caught at the tail end. Um, the standards and practices actually used to be really severe. Elizabeth Taylor, yeah, it was her, um, from what I remember, was had filmed this movie... And they actually used to have, I would have loved to have had this job. Yes, I'm a bit of a firm. The person would actually stand on top of a ladder. And they would look down. Like here on a woman to see how much chest was exposed. And she did something. And I can't find the story again. It was like ran after this movie. Saturday night said have like, uh, wait, was it Saturday or Friday? It was on PBS. I'm trying to remember what night it was like. They'd have like a movie. Then you'd have your TV shows. I think it was Friday night, maybe. I can't remember. Regardless, yes. So, yeah, you kind of know how standards and practices have changed. Getting back to shock treatment. By the way, wonderful song by the Ramones. Uh, basically, the town of Denton is turned... is The, the entire movie is shot inside of a TV studio. Uh, a guy by the name of Farley Flavors, played by Cliff Young, like I said, Dural, um, has basically taken over the television station... And he's wanting Brad done away with. They they convince Janet that Brad is psychologically unsound. 
and he needs locked up for his own good as well as doing some other things with Janet the bad thing about this movie is I think they could have done a little bit more with it the TV premise is okay and I understand that from if you read the stuff that they insert within the D the 25th anniversary DVD uh, the, and this is the only DVD copy I've ever seen um, they say there was like um, money problems due to problems with the Screen Actors Guild having a strike so there were a lot of issues so everything was filmed inside of a TV set in England I'm sorry not a TV set in a studio in England um, there are people if you watch closely enough who actually were in Rocky Horror Picture Show um, there's a uh, God, what's his name? I've only watched it once, and the dude basically is like Bart. Sorry, his name's Bart. Um, he's like this TV host who's blind, and he he has this show called Marriage Maze, and that's what Brandon and Janet is sucked up into. It's funny um, because the TV station has their own theme song, and all the residents in Denton are singing along to it. And if you watch Brad closely enough, it's funny to see his reaction Tim Curry should have been in this movie it would have been funny even if it wasn't as uh, Frankenfurter it would have been funny to see but I guess they offered him the role of Brad but he didn't think that Brad I'm sorry Farley flavors but he didn't think his uh, American accent was good enough I mean, it's kind of questionable um, if you've ever heard Tim Curry speak he does he is British from what I've seen heard and red, so yeah. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? There was something in here I wanted to mention, and I've had a long ass day. So, pardon me if I can't remember this correctly. Um, do do do. Jerry Newson, Jeremy Newson was the uh, Ralph Hapshat. They don't have Betty. The original Betty, they don't have. Kind of pissed me off. But it was a small bit role, and you really didn't see too much of her. Um,. So Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn play Cosmo and Nisha McKinley. That's what I was thinking of. It's kind of an interesting deal in here. Um, one, they actually play brother and sister. It's, it's questionable. I mean, you have, the thing about Magenta and Riff Raff, they're brother and sister. And here they're supposed to be brother and sister. But they're getting freaky. I seriously... Cosmo has a writing crop. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But you're like, dude, it's supposed to be your... S I'm confused. If the first movie didn't have confusion, this one has confusion. Stop waving around. Um, so that was the, that was one of the parts... The thing I didn't like... One of the other things is the opening doesn't really have like a song like Rocky Horror does. You know, Rocky Horror has science fiction picture show um and this one has like this guy starting off with this comment which leads you to question um who this figure is in this chair that you see and what's he up to um sorry just trying to move around here so yeah i mean it, it leaves questions and then you find out later what's going on not a hundred percent um and there's a lot to the movie I'm not going to say, but some stuff that I did like. I had to rewind a little bit because as I'm watching it, I notice in, the, in this background, in this prop department, I see a painting. Like, why does that painting look familiar? And it's the American Gothic painting that, you know, that Riff Raff and Magenta look like as they're in their role of the people who work at the funeral parlor in the first movie. Uh, they said, actually, you can see um, Frankenfurter's throne. It, it, I had to go back and look. Um, it's a lot of good elements in it. I have to say this. Really, I do. Little Nell was fine as Columbia in Rocky Horror. In Shock Treatment... Her voice is a little... It's just the same. It's that really high-pitched tone. Granted, I'm going to say this, her, she shows off her assets in this movie, which is helpful. Um, but her acting in a couple parts is a little questionable. There's a couple of scenes that made no sense. 
Um, especially there's uh, a song called Lullaby. I think that's the official title. I'm going to get the soundtrack. I really do. There's a lot of great music in the soundtrack. And her role in that was just... It's not explained. She She's supposed to be a nurse. There's this TV show called Denton Vale. Where Cosmo and... Uh, I almost said Wanda. That's all I can think of. is like Cosmo and Wanda. You know. From Fairly Odd Parents. Makes you wonder, you know. Where they secretly... You know, the creators of Fairly Odd Parents secretly fans of shock treatment and they snuck the Cosmo thing in there. Um, I gotta suggest that it's like a theory. That'd be funny. Uh, but, anyways, I'm getting mad at myself. Um, where was I? Where was I? So, yeah, so there's a lot of different things. A lot of the songs are really good. There's a couple, like, the actual shock treatment song, I didn't like that. Um, there's another song called I'm Looking for Trade. It's Janet is singing. I don't like that. Uh, anyway. Bitchin' in the Kitchen is one of the songs that I really like. Um, you have to look it up. If you don't want to watch the movie, look that song up at least. It's kind of funny. But it's also smart. And stupid at the same time. Because as you're watching it, they're looking at this TV screen, these different things are coming up on the screen, and they're like you're matching it to the song. And it's stupid because, in a way because the choice of items doesn't make sense that they're seeing on this TV screen. The song makes sense because they're doing it perfectly as they're going along. So it's like, it's like they're improvising it almost, but they're not. Um, so that's the smartness of it. One of the big things that I really, really enjoyed about this movie, other than the music, um, well, I like how they blend everything together, um, basically, where it's like, oh, you know, they have the big studio, they spent a lot of Denton on, um, in letters, and they show it like it's a set, the music is great, a lot of the acting is great, a lot of the, you know, quite a few of the songs are really good, like I said, Bitch in the Kitchen is my favorite, um, the guy who plays Rolf Hapshat, his role in there, I think, could have been avoided. It's not... I just didn't like it. It didn't flow well. One of the really good aspects of this movie is um, one of my favorite poems uh, that I was introduced to uh, as a rap song, actually. Um, the rap song is called Rhyme of the Ancient Hip Hop... Rhyme of the Hip Hop Mariner, sorry. Um, by Captain Dan, the Scurvy Crew. Loved them. Um, it's called The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And they actually do that in the movie. And I thought that was really cool. A really interesting uh, plot. Um, some of the other things that they do don't really add up. But in the end, especially the end. The end of the movie is kind of confusing. Um, with what happens. You have to watch it to really get it. There's a whole big thing about Brad and his family. But nothing really is discussed. And you try to focus on it. Like what's going on here you know. It is a good movie. I will give it that. It is a lot better than was described to me. And the reason I really want to get it. Like I said. And I'm not. And when the cinema snob was talking about it. And I watched it. A lot of the stuff fell in place because a lot of the stuff wasn't explained to me. Um, you know, the, the idea of having a psych ward, you know, in a TV st studio. Somebody willing to get put their hands, their, you know, lover's hands into some couple of people they don't know for fame, you know. The role Brad has is, is weird, but it opens up a lot of things of what they can be done in the movie. Ultimately, yes, it is a good movie. It has a good soundtrack. Uh, the couple of songs that... Eh, one of the funniest thing is one of the guys... There's a, a band called Oscar Drill and the Bits. Uh, it is a lot... Almost seems... Some of the music seems to be inspired by the 50s movies. Sorry, the 50s eh, music. Which makes sense. Um, another fun fact. If you like Phineas and Ferb... Richard K. O'Brien actually did play the voice of Grandpa Fletcher. Just saying. Um, in one of the shows. Anyways, I digress. So, could this movie have done better? Some aspects, yes. There are a couple things that weren't needed. 
but I can kind of understand why they brought it in. Like I said, um, Ralph Hapshat, having him have a little bit longer of a role in the movie than just the whole wedding thing in Rocky Horror. Uh, Betty, eh. you know, the whole deal with the the host of the game show, Bart. The guy's creepy, you know, and they don't explain why everybody goes to bed. And he's just sitting there, staring out the window with a bottle of, like, sleeping pills next to him. He doesn't take them, you know. Uh, no, why is he playing a blind man? You know, why is he... And you find stuff out throughout the movie. I'm not going to, you know, spoil it. But there's just stuff that is left unanswered that's driving me crazy. I know it's a movie, but at the same time, there's just questions that get asked. Ultimately, it is worth watching. If you've never seen it, if you like Rocky Horror, check it out. Go into it with an open mind, like anything. Um, I do encourage it. Uh, since it is PG, it is open more to people. I think you can actually... Sorry. Hey, look, it's upside down now. That's right, set up. You can actually see this from what I've seen on YouTube, but I got the DVD version while back um simply because like i said i wanted to see it i've been catching up on movies i'm trying to catch up on youtube just been trying to catch up on a lot of stuff so yeah so definitely worth it and check out the ramon song shock treatment as well shameless plug for old song that i still love <laughs> one of the thing is and i thought this was really cool and i didn't even know this the president of the Rocky Horror Fan Club actually has a cameo appearance, and they talk to him. The one person I really wish they had talked to during this was, uh, they have like a scene where they talk to different cast members. I really wish they had a chance to talk to Richard K. O'Brien, because it would have been really awesome to hear him talk about some of the stuff. Um, if you're interested, he actually does an acoustic version of Midnight uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Rocky Horror Picture Show theme. Where he's sitting on a giant pair of lips playing guitar, and they've got like a film reel behind him playing different stuff from the song. But yeah, one last thing: the shock treatment song that the movie, you know, they the base the movie off of. It's okay, not great. Um. Interesting seeing the positions a little Mel can get herself into. Yes, I'm perverted, but like I said, this is a PG movie, folks, and some of the stuff that they talk about in here is a little weird. Okay, I've not seen any PG movies that deal with the theme of incest and people going, witch, witch. I've seen a lot of movies too. One other thing I, I want to note the reason why I got this on DVD is for the closed captioning which works beautifully i encourage watching it with the closed captioning sorry the subtitles on for one reason first of all during some of the songs there are a couple words that don't make sense even if you i think even if you're hearing you can actually like use it like karaoke choose a theme turn it on you can sing along well yeah karaoke karaoke but you know you can sing along you can learn the words um they do introduce, by the way, this, I'm going to get this over and done with before the end of this almost 20 minute review now. There's one other thing that really ticked me off. And the cinema snob pointed this out. In the song Denton Vale for the TV studio, they talk about it's the town of understanding. They actually bring in, for whatever god awful reason, the idea of Janet's parents, who I could not stand. Because the way they were acting. Janet makes a con comment. Which leads her father into going into this little song. And I'm surprised that they ended it with a comment. Which I'm not going to repeat. But they're talking about values in that. And the thing that bugs me is. They're fine with their daughter being on a TV show. Or with her getting her 15 minutes of fame. If you watch it you're just like. Why can't her parents go what the. And then you see the end, and you go, oh my god, these people raised a child, and she actually turned out 
better than they are? Holy crap. The parents are the complete opposite of Janet. But she does let the quick fame get to her head. Um, Farley Flavors is a really charismatic guy. The thing is... <laughs> how does she not notice certain things? If you watch the movie, you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. How does she not notice what's going on when she first sees the guy until she's drugged up? Magenta, I'll admit it. Spoiler. Magenta drugs her because for some reason they're, they're trying to keep her under control. I won't say the reason. But yeah, so she sees Farley in person instead of on a video screen like when she first does. And she says something and you're going, why the did you do this sooner? Why didn't you notice something was amiss? You know, it doesn't make sense. And by the way, there is a scene that makes you think he is a masturbating. Literally, the way he's reacting during this deal Janet does really makes you think he's polishing the knob. So that's it, guys. This review's gone long enough. Um, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, or dislikes, anything like that, I don't care. If you want to dislike the video, thumb it up. Hey, go for it. Um, I will not beg you to subscribe if you're watching this. You've never seen my channel before. Um, by the way, if you want to look me up on Facebook, you can look me up on uh, Nick T. Wolf YouTube through Facebook. That's it, guys. I will talk to you later. Nighty-night. Goodbye.